Welcome to this week's edition of Hawk Talk. I've traded out uh, my co-host Parker Robinson for two of the members of the Dickinson State University rodeo team. They finally got their home event coming up, so we're going to touch on that. But before we get into that, guys, just go ahead and introduce yourselves. Tell us where you're from, what you're studying in school, and uh, what your event is or events are in, in rodeo. Well, I'm Carly Bodich. I'm from Sylvania, Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, it's about 11 and a half hours straight north of Dickinson. I'm taking egg business, um, and I compete in breakaway roping and barrel racing. And I'm Chance Glass, and I'm from Heber, North Dakota. I compete in calf roping and team roping. Sweet, sweet. Major? Uh, farm ranch management. Perfect, perfect. Now, uh, Carly, I understand you had a pretty important birthday last I night. Did, so before yes. we get into the serious <laughs> stuff, uh, okay, happy birthday Thank first. I don't know why I was going to say congratulations. <laughs> you, you made it, but uh, you all good yes, after that 21st? Actually, yeah, my grandparents and my mom drove down oh, from okay. home last night and uh, we celebrated. So it was lots of fun hanging Perfect. out with the team and it was, yeah, lots of fun. Awesome. So guys, uh, not everyone stays as up to date with um, kind of following where the rodeo team's at as they should. So just give us an overall understanding of, of how the region works, how that works as far as getting to nationals, um, and kind of how, how the season's going to this point, if you could. So college is a little different because all through um, our rodeo years, we compete as individuals. And when you come to college, we actually have a men's team and a women's team, which is different for rodeo athletes. So we do compete as in individuals, but our points add up to a men's and a women's team total. So um, before we go to rodeos, coach will establish who is on the points team, and those points will go to the average for the team points. And then um, you also make points at each rodeo from uh, the top six make points at okay. every rodeo. And then the top three in our region, which is North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, and Wisconsin, will go to college finals in Casper, Wyoming at the end of June. And it's not NAIA, NCAA, D1, D2. It's kind of everybody together, chance to touch on the different levels of competition that are all in the same region. There's just everybody just, I don't know, competes together. And they, everybody's for themselves. But we just have our schools that help us support us. I mean, Dickinson as a team, but yet we still compete for ourselves because sure. we go individually in our sure. events. And, uh, Rodeo travel is not the same thing as getting on the bus and going to a basketball, no. football, or any no. other game. No, so uh, take, us, take us through what exactly your preparations are um, for a typical trip and, and kind of what that entails and how big of a headache or, or whatnot <laughs> that can be. Well, our main priorities are definitely our equine athletes. So we're making sure that they're as comfortable and as prepared as can be. So, I mean, there's months and months of training that goes in um, just to get our horses conditioned and ready for this season. And then um, hours of preparation, loading hay and feed and uh, making sure that they're the most comfortable they can be. And then it's us that's driving through Minneapolis with a, you know, seven horse uh, yeah. trailer and a huge truck and through construction. And um, we coach has a rule that there's always two people awake, so we're safe and um, yeah, we uh, travel 12 hours and oh, yeah, long hours. yeah, long hours, and it's us who has to be watching the road and paying attention, and um, then we're, you know, we're busy. We're always helping in the arena and helping each other out all weekend, and then it's turn around and get back in time for class on Monday. So, so does that does that help with time management skills on the classroom side of thing, or does that just make the fall and spring a total disaster. It's pretty much a disaster for me. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. There's lots of homework on the road and study, study sessions in the hotel rooms at the rodeos. And a, a majority of us are taking agriculture related studies. Um, there's lots of art majors and political science and all that type of stuff too. But for the majority, we're in the egg building. So there's lots of group group homework sessions and helping each other with math and oh, yeah. English and, and whatnot just to make sure that everybody stays eligible and stays. Um, coach really stresses that we are student athletes, sure. student first, so we got to make those grades to stay on the team. Absolutely. You talked about 11 hours from home. You're not quite as far <laughs> from home, so, yeah. so kind of touch on both of you guys, how you ended up deciding that, that Dickinson was where you wanted to further your education and, and keep competing in rodeo. Uh, Dickinson was close to home for me, and I just wanted to be close to home that and that way I can go home when I feel like I needed to. And, and that really helped me decide where I was headed. And, and Dickinson reached out to me first, I guess, okay. was the first school for, 
said, hey, you want to come rodeo? And I was like, might as well. <laughs> might as well. I love You didn't know rodeo. what you're getting yourself into? No. Right? no. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're hooked. Yeah. How about you? Um, I actually got recruited at um, National High School Finals in Wyoming in 2012. The um, past assistant coach, Jen Obergay, which reached out to me and uh, we toured, my dad and I came um, my junior year and toured and we really liked the small class sizes and the agriculture building. Chip Poland is a great, a great guy. He really does a lot for the school and we got to meet him the first day and just seemed like the best choice. Absolutely. So finally, um, to round out the regular season, you guys are going to be at home in Dickinson. Um, take us through, first off, the avenue, or excuse me, the venue you're going to be in, because that's, that's a bit of a change from, from folks who are used to um, where you guys typically compete. So touch on, touch on that um, change. Yeah, we're super excited that the Stark County um, board has built a new fairgrounds just south of town on Highway 22. Um, our old rodeo grounds was right near campus, which um, had its ups and downs. Uh, so we're excited for the new, uh, the new place. It's very, very nice, huge, huge grandstands and very nice pens in the back and a good setup. So um, we're actually looking into getting a shuttle so that our uh, students can be picked up at May Hall and transported to the rodeo, get into the rodeo for free with your student ID and then a free ride home so we'll have more updates on that as we get it more clarified but we uh we're hoping that everyone still comes out to support even Absolutely. though it's a five minute drive instead of a you know 10 minute walk so we've had we've had pretty nice spring weather and i know i've been to the rodeo i don't know if it was two years ago and it was about 35 oh, degrees yeah. and cold. Cold. <laughs> do you have any weather predictions or it's probably gonna rain <laughs> it's probably it's gonna, gonna rain. rain there is a roof on the grandstand though so there we go be in no, there. no more excuses yeah and that's may 5th and 6th is yes. when uh these folks are going to be at home um just take us through the thought process of not having to spend the weekend on the road how how much of a relief is that yeah. but also are there other responsibilities that go along with hosting that are also a bit of a headache Yes, we have a lot of headache We're putting on the rodeo sometimes. You know, you, we have to sort the cattle and have everything working, and we have to run the rodeo, you know, yeah. so we have to, it's not just show up with a basketball and throw it in a hoop, you know. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's moving cattle, taking care of entries and whatnot, so it's a lot of preparation goes into this rodeo. Yeah, a lot beforehand, a lot of sponsorship, a lot of getting the announcer and the stock and, and making sure that our rodeo runs as smooth and as fast as possible. Now, obviously, it's not um, very cheap to do all the stuff that you do, all the travel that you do. Um, so, so touch on the ways that you guys fundraise and, and some of those events and how people could potentially contribute. So we have a rodeo council that's made up of local members um, from the community, past DSU ro rodeo alumni, and some people that just enjoy rodeo and want to support us. And they're awesome. They, um, they put on Cowboys and Candlelight for us, which is going to be November 4th next year. Mark it down. Um, it's, a, it's a really fun night. It's a supper at the Elks. Uh, we have a dance and a band and a live and silent auction, and that does a lot of our fundraising for the year. Um, we also have some major sponsors, especially for the rodeo. Um, the community really steps up and helps us out to put that rodeo on, because it does. It costs a lot of money to to make a weekend like that happen. Absolutely. So guys, what's next for you once uh, once college rodeo is done? Once once you've got those degrees, do you have uh, you have your plans mapped out for the future? I like I don't. So if <laughs> you don't, don't worry about I, it. I don't either. So Okay, no, no worries. Uh, no worries. What about for you? Um, I'm kind of a planner, so I do have a future <laughs> planned out. Um, I definitely want to travel a little bit. I'm interested in doing, um, the school actually has a program with um, Kentucky where you can um, go down there and work as a basically a groom okay. for a racehorse ranch. Sure. So I'm really interested in that, possibly going to work on a farm in Australia for a little bit oh. and then eventually end up somewhere near home. So that's kind of the plan. I, I mean, rodeo is kind of different because it's a lifelong sport. Yeah. And, you know, you hear lots of volleyball players and, <laughs> and stuff, and they're so sad when they have to leave yeah. college because that's it. They probably won't play it competitively anymore. And we are fortunate enough that, I mean, we could be 60 oh, yeah. and have four kids in rodeo and still be going. Oh, yeah. So that's the, best, that's the best feeling is knowing that this is a lifelong 
lifelong sport. Absolutely. So one final time, let's go over the dates and give the folks a reason to uh, come out and support you guys. So the Slack's going to start on noon on Friday the 5th, and then there will be a performance on Friday night at 6, and then another performance Saturday at 1, and then the short round, which is the top 10 in each event from the weekend, will be Saturday night at 6. And we're also going to recognize our seniors and um, a rodeo team member of the year that night. And the, it's actually the last rodeo for the region, so the saddles and all the championships for the whole region will be handed out that night. Awesome. Guys, thanks for joining us. Thank see you guys here. out there. Yeah, thank you so much. And we'll be back after a short break on Hawk Talk. Welcome back to Hawk Talk. It's time for our Blue Feather feature. We've got a student athlete in the house. All student athletes this week. Coaches were last week. Um, so go ahead, introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. I'm Bryce Wigert. I'm from Anaconda, Montana, and I'm a junior on the football team. Junior on the football team. And Bryce, I know your story on how you ended up finding Dickinson in the recruiting process, and it it's one of the better stories I've heard. So uh, go ahead and go ahead and tell the folks well, um, how an unfortunate event turned into a positive one. Okay, so basically how it went out was my coach had a tie at the University of Jamestown, and we took our first ever college visit there for a wrestling scholarship. And sad to say that probably the worst decision of my life. <laughs> stepping I mean, foot on campus. Stepping foot yeah. on Jamestown's campus was. <laughs> Definitely not wonderful. And then on the way back, my cousin called and he's like, hey, you need to come check out Dickinson. And I fell in love, first sight, signed like first week after my recruiting trip and just enjoyed it ever since. Absolutely. Talk about your cousin, um, kind of a bit of a family family gathering here at Dickinson State for, for the Wigert. So explain what, what he did here and uh, then we'll touch on your brother. Okay, so my cousin played football here. He was a senior when I came in. Um, he was an exercise science major. Just recently graduated. Uh, upon my second year here, we got my brother to transfer from Montana Tech. He was kind of bouncing around between the Montana sure. schools. and Found a home here. He found, found his final home here and he enjoys it. He says he loves it a lot more than all the other schools. So it's been a good fit. And now we've got a bit of a recruiting edge in, in Western Montana. Thanks, <laughs> thanks to your father. Talk about the connections he's uh, tried to continue. Um, maybe we need to get him on staff as a recruiter. I mean, he does bring a lot of kids over from Western Montana. He likes to recruit almost every sport, mostly football, just trying to get those kids exposed to where Dickinson is, because at first I had no clue, but once I found out and once all these kids have been taking tours, they've learned to love it. And most of them have planned, and my dad's got a bunch of kids lined up that's saying, <laughs> hey, will you take me down already? So, Absolutely, that's awesome. Now, uh, spring football just wrapped up, so what is spring football in your eyes? You're kind of in that crossing over to an upperclassman, um, still getting experience on the field, but at the same time, you've got that leadership role where, where you're someone that the younger guys are looking up to. So, so what, was, what was spring football like for you? Um, basically, spring football is basically knocking the rust off, getting your original plays down, and also teaching the younger kids the plays because they didn't have the chance during the fall to run the stuff we run because they're doing all the scout team work. Sure. So basically, it's like helping the younger kids get like accommodated to our playbook plays and get them on the field and exposed. What happens now? Now that spring ball's over, that that ended a couple weeks ago. What's the what's on the docket until fall camp kicks off? Um, we should have about fifty guys staying here this summer, and we'll jump right into summer workouts. We start literally next week, so. That's uh, that's voluntarily on on your own, but yeah. but you see a lot. Like you mentioned the number fifty. I know Coach Stanton. We had him on quite a bit in the fall, and he he touched on how important that was to the chemistry of that team. To you know, there's there's something to do in Dickinson, but 
not not too much outside of your teammates. Yeah. So you kind of you kind of build those bonds and and get ready to go in the fall. How how important from a player side do you think it is to see guys buy into the program like that? I mean, having kids here this summer was a big help. Our team chemistry easily went up. Everybody got along. You could definitely see kids that like weren't actually like super close or super close now, and all of us are getting invested and everybody's getting along fine. When when you got here. Um, we were making the transition out of the frontier, and frankly, we were new new blood in the North Star. And in your time here, we've the cream has risen to the top. Um, we've we've won two consecutive North Star championships now. So, what's the mindset? Has it changed in your eyes from we need to prove ourselves to wh where are you at now? How do you how do you stay at the top? Um, we just got to keep plugging away. We got to look at every opponent as a tough opponent. Um, our main goal is to get farther into the playoffs. Losing the first round at Tech twice in a row is not a pleasant feeling, and everybody's hungry to get to that next level. Absolutely, that wasn't a pleasant feeling, but uh, you've had you've had some pleasant feelings throughout your time at Dickinson. What would you say some of your favorite memories um, in in your time as a Blue Hawk? Um, it started like right off away, and I found my home, which was all the memories in Selkie. I mean, anybody knows that Selkie knows how to do things like events, activities. Um, there's not a night you're not gonna see somebody up till three in, the, like three in the morning in the lobby doing homework, talking to people. Not always doing it, it depends. Yeah. It's, it's a cycle. Sometimes it's time to, time yeah. to get homework done. Sometimes it's time to, time to be an idiot in college, right? Yeah. With uh, as you kind of get closer to to the end of the line, what are what do you see your goals, either on the field or as you transition into the real world? Kind of what's what's the next steps for you um, in that regard? Um, mostly, it's I'm going into elementary education, so it's kind of giving back to like programs that sometimes I didn't have them, and I would have loved it. But I guess my dad's driven me to give back to the community more, expose kids to things that they might not be able to like get and sure. experience. So elementary education gonna end up, it's gonna be Mr. Wiggert. Yeah. Not, not too long. Not too long. I mean, I have a couple years left, but eventually, hopefully, I'll be teaching fifth grade, fourth grade. Montana, and North Dakota, wherever? Leaning towards more of Montana region. I do North Dakota, but <laughs> Wyoming, where I'm from, that's where the money's at in teaching. You know, that you is gotta, where the money's at. Gotta I just... head to Wyoming. No, but uh, Bryce, before we let you go, just give give the folks something to look forward to with this upcoming football season, trying to make it a three-peat in the North Star, and like you said, trying to get a little bit further in the playoffs. What can we look forward to this coming fall? Um, definitely we got a couple kids coming back. The younger kids are going to fill some roles. We only had, like, one major loss on the offensive line, and... It'll get filled pretty soon. These kids are working hard. Everybody's busting their hump. Come on out and support the Hawks. Yeah, come on out. I mean, Thursday night. It's this might be our first talk talk before that game. Thursday night, August twenty fourth. Blue Hawks host Rocky Mountain College. Bryce, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Best of luck in uh, becoming Mr. Wigger. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week's version of Hawk Talk. Make sure you check out that. Dickinson Rodeo coming up. First opportunity to see the new fairgrounds. It's going to be an exciting event. Hopefully we're going to get some good weather for that. All sorts of other activities happening this weekend. Check out dsubluehawks.com to stay up to date on that. Um, and uh, dsuheritagefoundation.org. That's where you can reserve your tailgating spot for that uh, August 24th showdown with Rocky Mountain College. <laughs>